Okay, so the first of Carl Rogers' core conditions is congruence. Other ways to say congruence might be genuineness, authenticity, realness. You can see they're all three very different terms, but they're all part of, of congruence. This is described in the book Skills in Person-Centered Counseling and Psychotherapy by Janet Tolan as the flame at the heart of the smoke. It was one of her students which came up with that uh, metaphor, which is very nice. The smoke would be all the cultural things that were involved in, for example, body language and prejudices and everything that all of this baggage or I suppose that comes to us from our culture that's all the the smoke and that you could say would be incongruence it's the persona it's the smoke that protects our true selves from judgment I suppose but it results in us being quite incongruent because no one can see the flame at the heart of the smoke sometimes there's so much smoke stay with me then the flame itself is your true self without any of that baggage. You can imagine the clean flame of a, of a candle that burns without any smoke. And that is what you want to get in touch with during your own personal counselling. And as a counsellor, you need to be in touch with that in order to, to counsel because you're trying to help the client to get there, to get to that place where they can see their true self and what they really want and who they really are. There are two sides to congruence, being congruent with the client and being congruent with yourself in your own life. Being congruent with the client again is this openness, honesty, genuineness. For There are some examples in Irvin Yalom's book, The Gift of Therapy, even though he's not a person-centered counselor, he would be still a humanistic therapist. And he talks about having a client who can benefit from him telling them how he perceives them because no one in your life will normally tell you how you are perceived and a lot of us at different times in our life are desperately wishing that we knew how do I look to other people how do I look to the world how do I present myself do I seem like the person I want to seem like whoever that is I I personally I'd hope that I would be a nice person that I would seem nice and warm and not grumpy and cold although I can be grumpy sometimes for example And so a counsellor can tell you by being congruent how they perceive you. Or, for example, they might say, you know, I'm I'm noticing that you're feeling tense even, which sometimes might not be a comfortable thing to say, but it's an honest thing to say. Now, this is always done, has to be said, with the best interest of the client at heart. You only do it when it benefits the client. You're not going to be brutally honest or you're not going to be honest at the wrong time when they're vulnerable. So the next part is being congruent in your own life. This is why personal development and personal counselling is so important to anyone who wants to be a counsellor or a therapist. They really need to be self-aware. They need to live in, in, in good faith, be faith, good faith, be honest with themselves and know themselves. Um, hence the little picture I've put up here from The Matrix, which of course is an allegory for the true self trying to emerge from this world of false expectations, this extremely elaborate world that's built up um, and interfering with someone's ability to know themselves um, and to be themselves as the Wachowskis later uh, be- blossomed and became their true selves and as Neo does in the film. So you don't have to learn how to fly in order to be a counsellor, but it helps. Um then you have also, yes, that's the thing. You have to know yourself in order that the client can know themselves. Um, I, in the next slide, have this picture of, that I found online and that I've put the credit in the description. If anyone wants to check it out, if you own that picture, thank you or I'm sorry, whichever is applicable. Um, so the mask The idea is if you don't know yourself and you try to be genuine and honest and you take your mask off, you don't know what's underneath. How are you supposed to be genuine and honest? If you're not familiar, how are you supposed to reveal your true self if you don't know who that is? There's another mask underneath or there's something completely unknown underneath. So that's going to be a huge interference with um, with your congruence, with your with your genuineness. There's a, a quote that very much sums this up from Carl Rogers. He says, In my relationships with persons, I have found that it does not help in the long run to act as though I were something that I am not. 
Again, for all of the images, please check the description to find the original artist. Um, congruence allows the client to trust the counsellor and to see a model of congruence. Because if they want to become congruent, it it's not essential, but it helps to know what that looks like. Surely there's there's bound to be other congruent people in their lives, but not always. Um, they should have a greater insight into how they are perceived by others, thanks to congruence. I talked about that before. And it allows them to learn from the counsellor's experience of the session. This is the alum again. By being honest about how you've experienced the session, by both of the clients being honest about it, they can they can grow to better understand, um, both the client and the counsellor can better understand themselves and benefit further from the process. Next one would be, yes, and of course the first one, as I said, trusting the counsellor. How can you trust someone if you don't know that they're honest with you? How can you predict what they're going to do if they're always going to pretend to be someone else? And that is the last word on counselling, on congruence from my video. Thank you very much for watching and please check out the other videos in the links.